Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 and we've made some big improvements on a lot of the um, miscellaneous supplies of resources that are coming in this this week so uh, let's let's jump in and start having a look at what we've done. The first thing I want to talk about is over here on Agonea where the Vulcanite production has been um, improved somewhat and I talked about my plans for this last week quite a bit so I'm going to show you sort of now what's actually happened over here and running through the system we've got a series of trains that come over here and drop off the Vulcanite core chunks although they are then supposed to clear off back to core weight after they've after they've emptied like this uh, in order to then allow the next train to come in although at the moment there aren't any waiting up there because I don't have quite enough I don't have enough core mines at the moment to keep up with the demand on this on this system here which is why you can see that now we've we've run out we've got the last of the Vulcanite and the core chunks coming out out here. But the core chunks are then being processed down here where they're being pulverized down into all of the um, all of the, the sort of mundane resources. Those all pour out this way. And then they're getting then they're, they're not really getting dealt with. Most of it is just flowing straight through and going on down the disposal belts over here. But we are pulling a little bit of the iron ore out to be turned into iron plates and then into steel plates over here. Um, so we've got this this first system here is pulling off the middle belts. So we've got the splitters here. The first one will take all of the iron upwards. The second one will then prioritise putting as much of that as it can into this chest, which as you can see is completely full. And then, but then any that won't fit in will then go in, goes into this splitter and gets put back onto this belt. So, so all of the stuff that isn't iron will just flow straight through. But any iron will go up here, be put into here if it can be, and then drop down here if not. So it's always going to nicely filter out the iron if it, uh, as much as we need, and then let the rest of it go past along here. The same is happening over here with the uh, with the top belt, but we're only pulling out. We're not bothering to put it into a chest here because there seems to be plenty of it coming through, as you can see by the. Uh, sheer amount of backlog of, of iron along here and of steel along here. We've got a couple of um, greenhouses in here to grow the uh, grow the wood to make into the, into the uh, coke to make the steel and I've done exactly the same thing for pulling out the coal along here as well and the reason we're making steel is that pulverizing these core chunks over here produces a certain amount of pyroflux and so we're pumping that through into here and then that can be turned it back can be put into barrels that are made from the steel and then put out to again go on the disposal system. And we also produce various other fluids over here. So we, we get, we're producing quite a lot of water, but that's needed on this planet. So we're letting that come out into this tank here and then be passed up here to be used for other processes. But if there's ever an excess of it, we can just um, we can blow it off into the atmosphere here with this uh, with this flare stack. Similarly, the mineral water is just getting dumped straight into the flare stack because we don't have any need for mineral water on this planet. It's not worth barreling it up. We're just getting rid of it because we don't we don't care about it. We have we have more than enough of it on Norvis already, so there's no point in shipping it over there just to sort of just to flare it off down there. The oil similarly is being pumped through this way and up to be used for other things. However, if we ever through some sort of mi miracle have an excess of oil available here, it will go off into this tank over here where you can see there is approximately none at the moment and if this ever gets up to 20,000 then we'll pump it through, we'll put it into barrels and we'll ship it down to Norvis where it can then be used. However, I'm not expecting this to ever kick in, I've just put it there as a sort of an emergency just in case, just in case something unexpected happens. And oh, look, we've got another flood of uh, resources coming through now because we've had some more core chunks come in. And so you can see the system working along here, the iron is coming through a lot, the iron ore is coming through along here. The plates are being turned into steel, steel is being turned into barrels, and the barrels are being put on the belt to be taken away. So that's uh, most, that's all, most that's all of the, sort of the, the core chunk byproducts being dealt with. The vulcanite itself is being brought up here, and I'm putting it into a warehouse up here, and that the um, in order to balance it off a bit. And this is probably a bit unnecessary, but my original expectation was that we were going to be producing the um, the vulcanite ore more quickly from here uh, than we're using it up. But it'd be a bit bursty because of these gaps in the trains. That said, it's, that is not the case, and we're not building up any sort of buffer in here at all. It's coming out as fast, just as fast as it's flowing in, which is is fair, I guess, because each of these is designed to deal with an entire belt. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, and we've got eight belts going out and eight belts going in. So it, yeah, it's always going to be completely balanced over here. So that warehouse is never actually going to fill up. I also had a, a side thought about bringing it in from this station over here, which is why these belts are in here. But I never linked them up because, well, as you can see, we're not actually bringing enough vulcanite through to this station in order to keep this running absolutely flat out. I think I might need some extra vulcanite mines, but to be honest, I think we're producing everything we need fast enough at the moment. This is not this is not the limiting factor. Um, Although, well, it is right now, but in general, I think we're probably going to be okay. But I'm going to look into that a bit more in the next stream. The Vulcanite ore then flows into all these processing facilities. These are exactly the same as the systems I had over here, uh, we've got, except we've got three of them over here, one running from this station, two running from this station, which is probably why this one keeps running out. Maybe I need to have one station per um, per one of these blocks to get in order to keep it running, because you see, this one got another train in before the warehouse emptied. This one probably won't.
won't. But we'll 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 keep we'll keep an eye on it. So there we go. The uh, the the uh, train has emptied. There's another train coming in already. That's going quite well. Oh, but no, the the warehouse is emptied. So yeah, it looks like we need a sta it, one of these requires a station, or perhaps I need to put in a lot more of these green loaders in order to unload the train a bit more quickly. That might also do. Or perhaps I need to just have more trains because now this one is here right behind it. It's quite possible that when this one pulls out, the next train will be able, will uh, will come in before the unloading happens. But anyway, so we've got three of these processing systems taking the uh, vulcanite ore and turning it into into the um, vulcanite cubes. Over here, we've got four of them dealing with everything that comes out from the core mining, which is it is more than we need to be honest. This system is 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 dealing with the uh, vulcanite faster than it's coming in. That said, if I have more trains coming in here and dropping the uh, resources, dropping the the uh, core chunks off, then maybe and and therefore more mines as well, then maybe we'll be able to keep up a little bit better. But at the moment, the limiting factor is is the rate the core chunks coming in. This is slightly overbuilt. Oops, oh well, never mind. <laughs> there are also a few extra things you need in order to actually make the uh, the vulcanite cubes, as well as the ore. So over here, we've got this, this sulphur belt coming in over here, and that's coming from a sulphur supply down this way. And I've had to expand this a bit. So previously, I just had this area here, and I realized I didn't have enough. Well, it wasn't it wasn't so much the sulphur that was the problem. As you can see, these uh, these machines over here seem to be quite easily able to keep this belt full. The, the sulphur was struggling at some point, so I thought, let's let's put in a bit of extra, just to, just to make sure. The problem was the, uh, the petroleum gas, and that's because that's being used up in quite large quantities as well for the, um, for the vulcanite processing. Because one of the steps down here, yes, this one requires petroleum gas in order to cook the, uh, the the vulcanite. I'm sort of assuming this is is this a furnace? Yes, this is a furnace. So I'm assuming it's burning the petroleum gas in or, uh, in the presence of the water. Maybe maybe steaming the enriched vulcanite and the crushed vulcanite turns it into a cube and some steam. I don't I don't know how this is supposed to work, but it requires it requires petroleum gas to be fed into it, and so we needed a lot more of that than we had before. Fortunately, the amount we're getting through does seem to be able to one one single pipe does seem to be enough, and I'm not actually put that many pumps in along here. This is just sort of being happily kept full by the by the uh, sheer quantity of um, of these refineries I've got running along here, and so we we have a plentiful supply of it. This is where all of the oil that comes from the core, core chunk processing down here is going. It's being pushed into here and being used as a priority. However, if we start to run out in this tank here, which is being kept at ten at ten thousand by this by this pump here, we will then pull additional oil in out of these um, these tanks up here, which is being which are being uh, topped up by a train system. So this is all being kept topped up by the trains. However, we're we're using the oil from down here as a priority, and that's working really well. I'm um, I'm happy with the system and it's keeping everything running. The other thing resource that's needed in order to make the petroleum gas is a, is a healthy supply of water and that's also needed for the sulfur as well and so previously I had um, this belt coming up here over to this me me melting machine over here which was producing water at a decent rate uh, but unfortunately due to the sheer length of the pipes and the demand on the system it wasn't making it all the way through here in, into the um, in, in, into the system over here so in, so to get round that I've split off the um, the ice belt here and I've got the ice being fed up here and across here in order to allow it to be turned into water over here and then pumped through into, into the system up here. And that is giving me an absolutely plentiful supply. I'm also doing also doing the standard prioritization thing where we're saying only pump when there's less than 10,000 here so we can get the, uh, the the water out of the core chunk processing first and then use and then top it up with this system. And as you can see, this is ticking over here. The, uh, the core chunk processing is not producing remotely enough to keep everything running, but it's providing a little bit of it. It's meaning we're having to bring in slightly less uh, ice from Norvis. We're having to bring in slightly less oil from the mines and so I think it is very worth having. When I was building all this up, I um, I put all of the bits and pieces I, I needed, or at least all the bits and pieces I thought I needed, into my spaceship and then flew over. But in order to let get down and let on, get all that stuff down onto the planet, well, I had a couple of choices. I could either put it all into my inventory uh, and then try and bring it down and and, and just try, and then dump it into yellow warehouses or something like that, and then just hope I brought the right stuff. And that would have led to me going up and down the elevator endlessly, trying to make sure I got all of the resources that were needed down here. Or I, I, I just did, did the maths, and so our uh, spaceship ships have a couple of um, rocket fuel booster tanks in them as you can see down here um, and these are they're okay they're allowed they allow the spaceship and, and along with the ion booster tanks they allow the spaceships to take off from orbital places like this and then and then we can use the fuel from the these ion tanks to power the engines to fly across the uh, the voids of space 
In theory, these tanks can allow a spaceship to take off from a planet as well. But we ha I ended up doing the maths, thanks to somebody on in, in, in chat on, on stream. I forget who it was. I think it might have been regular. If it wasn't you, if it was someone else, then I apologise and, and credit, to the, to credit to where it's due. But these tanks will allow a spaceship to, of a certain size to take off from a certain size of planet. And so the maths involves looking at the um, the, str the stresses on here to see how, how, how big the ship is and therefore how heavy it is. You multiply it by various numbers and then you multiply it by the size of the planet, which we see here. And from doing the maths, we worked out that basically these ships can take off from any planet that's less than about 3,000. So Big Red is going to be borderline, but we can definitely take off from Agnea. We can take off from Drak and Taishikutin if we ever go back there, which we probably won't. We pro oh no, and we almost certainly can't take off from Kothar, but we can take off from Njord. So... It's a little bit iffy. We, if we, we should probably be putting an extra couple of uh, of these booster tanks into these ships, which would be easy enough to do. We could just take out one of these solar panels on either side and then chuck in a, another tank in, 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 in the gap that will be created there. So, And then we'd be able to take off from planets up to 4,000 in uh, in diameter. Maybe No, sorry, 6,000 in diameter even. Uh, the, uh, the only problem is we might then have to remove a few of the chests from up here, which I actually have already done because I was uh, faffing around with something or other. I don't remember why I did that, but I, I, I had a good reason at the time. Uh, and so I... I I've got a bit with this ship. I now have a bit of uh, container stress available. If it, if it was done with all of the chests in there, we might find that you need, there isn't there isn't enough container stress available, and a few of the chests would have to go. But there's quite a lot in there, so it probably would be fine to remove a few of them. One trip over wasn't enough because I didn't bring enough belts. I think I brought about four thousand of them with me. But if we look down here, you can see that. I have put down an enormous quantity of blue belts. This massive chunky bus running all the way down here alone is going to have taken up. I, I don't know how many. Um, <laughs> One and a half thousand in that area alone. And then there's all this stuff up here. So the 4,000 I brought weren't enough. So I then brought another 4,000 out as well, just to make sure. And that seems to have kept things going reasonably well so far. I haven't, haven't run out again yet. And so, all of these belts pour all of the resources that are coming through, all the vulcanite and the miscellaneous stuff that's being generated as well. You can see all of this uh, stone and sand down here, and, and when the core processing runs, we get all of the ores down here as well. That all goes into this warehouse, gets loaded into the train as quickly as possible. Now, the warehouse is, is mostly empty, so the train is keeping up quite impressively at the moment. Uh, the train then runs up to here, as you've seen before, unloads into this warehouse, which unloads then into all of these warehouses up here. And during the last stream, I noticed that these all, this, all of these warehouses were full. The train was stuck up here and the system had ground to a halt because we've managed to bring so much vulcanite and, and associated stuff up here that we just, yeah, the, as I say, the train couldn't, the train couldn't empty. Um, however, the ship has done a couple of runs back and forth now and so things are starting to calm down a little bit. And the problem was actually over in Norbit and over here we had a problem where the, the, basically this, this warehouse had filled up completely with junk and so had this one and, and, and so had these ones. So everything was completely full and the system had ground or hold and would just stopped working. Um, and so Tristan spent some time messing around with the with the downstream trains and also the the disposal at the other end and has managed to fix this as you can see because the uh, well a train has arrived here and is filling up with the miscellaneous junk that's in this warehouse. There's still 250 stacks worth of it here so we, we've got quite a lot of it to go but if we look down here on Norvis you can see that most most of these belts have emptied fairly fairly efficiently and fairly quickly. The problem is we're waiting for a few more of these uh, purple underground belts to be produced, and there is a massive shortage of them. Oh, and here's the train that's just come down from the uh, from the Agnea dump downstream station to lo to unload a load of stuff onto the belts and demonstrate the uh, demonstrate the problems. So those are all dumping over to here because the uh, the purple belts are in theory the fastest ones. The problem is. There's a, oh, there's a red uh, underground here. I mean, that could at least be up updated to a green to stop it being quite so much of a, uh, a bottleneck there and then upgraded to a purple later. But then these, these feed down into some warehouses down here. These provide a little bit of buffering for the, uh, for the outputs of the, um, of, of the trains to allow it to sort of, to, to be stocked up here a little bit and then passed on as necessary. There's something weird going on here with the, with the double warehouses passing from one to the other. That's a bit strange, but um, I can sort of see it's, it's because it's to allow them to cram it in there. What you should probably have done is you Use the one size down, and but um, well then even then, I don't know. We've got we've got funny numbers of belts coming through here, so that'd be a little bit tricky. But anyway, it puts it all down into these warehouses. We then get a nice steady stream of it flowing down to be put into the trains down here, um, and that allows it to be taken away. As we fill a train up down here, the train can then take it away and bring it over to the uh, the usual junk processing facility up here. And as you can see, there's actually a bit of a queue formed of trains here. So the uh, the unloading seems to be struggling a little bit. Now, this is not too bad. Um, if the trains come all the way, queue up all the way back down to here, then there's serious problems. But at the moment, the things seem to be flowing through reasonably well. The train is able to unload as quickly as it can. Uh, this warehouse here is basically empty. So the system is going quite well. It might be worth putting in a few additional signals along here so that the trains can pull through a bit more quickly 
quickly uh, when, the, when the one in front of them leaves. But yeah, we've got the, the unloading is going quite well. You can see everything is being dumped out onto the, onto the uh, belts up here as it should be. This warehouse is about half full though. It seems to be a, a copper excess. We're not sending enough copper out here. Maybe the copper needs to be upgraded to a green belt as well. Um, but anyway, the idea is all of this gets dumped out. We did have a problem with sand at one point, which is why we've got this stack of warehouses here and three purple belts taking the sand out from here. And this is because on Taras we have enormous quantities of sand being produced as a byproduct from the uh, from the imasite production. And that means that we get we get an absolute ton of it flooding through here, which is why we've got all of these shenanigans going on over here, just to get rid of as much of it as possible. And then, I was going to say, and then flow it all over to here, where it can then be turned into glass and silicon and other such like. Uh, but but this seems to have stopped. Apparently we have enough glass and we have enough silicon. Uh, no, we have enough silicon. The, the glass might be being taken... Where, where is glass being produced? Glass is being produced down here. Um, yes, we have enough glass as well. So... Yeah, we, we currently don't have any sinks for the sand, which is why it's being buffered in these warehouses along here, which may turn out to be a problem in the future. We shall see. Hmm. That's a bit of, that is a bit of a worry, to be honest. Back on Agnea, the other thing that's very important for me to mention that I put in was, well, as I said in the last video, I broke Mike's Iridium production system over on Kothar because I stopped feeding out enriched Vulcanite to him by delivery cannon because um, because I because I pulled up all the delivery cannon systems essentially, and yeah, that caused some problems. Uh, I've done I've, I've put in a, a system over here to sort of try and to try and solve that problem, um, and what this does is is from the it basically pulls out some of the enriched. Vulcanite that comes through here that would be being turned into Vulcanite cubes and passes it through here to these two delivery cannons Which are firing it over it over, over to Kothar um, and that's kind of working Although it has occurred to me that because I've put this in on the um, on the systems that are running from the uh, From the core processing we run the risk of this not having any supply available if the uh, if the when the core chunk supply dries up And the core chunk supply does keep drying up so I might need to do some improvement over there that said, if we have a look in these machines, they do contain, well, they, they, they have a bit of buffer in them. Uh, this one has actually stopped completely, okay. No, there, 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 there's a bit of a problem here. I should probably, probably should have put these in over here on this system where there is a much healthier supply and because this one is being fed by the train, there is more of it coming through. Maybe I'll move, move it over in the next uh, stream because, yeah, I, I do need... I do need Mike to have a steady, a nice steady supply of, um, of of the enriched vulcanite coming through, so he can carry on making the iridium. And I don't want to, be, I don't want to be the uh, the limiting factor, the weakest link, as it were. That enriched vulcanite is coming over here to Kothar, where it falls out of the sky into this delivery cannon chest, like that, and then gets passed up the belts along here, like this. And yeah, this is not as much as we had had flowing down it before. So this the system is currently struggling, uh, thanks to the system on over on um, Agnea not being quite sufficient. However, this then flows through here, and it's going, it's doing reasonably well. I was going to say, when it was running before, we had enough coming through that we had a solid, we had two solid belts of um, iridium blast cake coming through here on, on the on these red belts, and that was that was really really good. However. It seems to have run into another problem. Um, looking around, I'm not quite sure what it is. Let's see, is it, is it you? Are you the problem? Yes, we've run out of nitric acid, which presumably means we've run out of mineral water, uh, which presumably means not enough mineral water is being brought down. Which, uh, yeah, not enough mineral water has been brought down to fill this train up in order for it to depart. So we'll take a look at that in a moment. But it was extremely glorious for a little while while we had we had two solid belts of blast cake coming through out here, going into the furnaces, and then being cooked up. And if we look at the uh, production graphs for iridium ingots, you can see that uh, well, this 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 dead patch down here. This this was when I broke the, the supply system, so there was there was no um, enriched vulcanite coming in at this point. Then I put in a delivery cannon, and it jumped up to 250 far, 250 something uh, iridium ingots per minute, which is pretty good. Then I put in the second delivery cannon, and it jumped up to about 400 and something. And then apparently we ran out of mineral water, and it, it all just it all just dropped like that. So so this is what it's capable of when the system is running nicely. These, this dip here might be due to a, uh, a shortage of the enriched vulcanite coming through, uh, which so I, as I say, I do need to up upgrade that a little bit, so we've got a bit more of it available. But we're doing quite well for the iridium now, um, and, we're, and we're, 
<laughs> we're solving one supply problem after another and, and getting gradually getting there so things are sort of working and in an attempt to make it all work a little bit better Mike has put uh, tier 6 productivity modules in a lot of these machines around here so you can see all these these are these are tier 6s the ones up at the top are tier 3s because there weren't enough tier 6s when he did it so the idea is that the ones that should run all the time have got the tier 6s and then the ones that will only run occasionally are, are only on tier 3 and after doing the maths last time I believe that with all these tier 6 productivity modules in the correct places, we should be able to fill the spaceship up with iridium from the stuff that's made from one spaceship's worth of mineral water. Eventually the spaceship will come back from uh, Norbit, there it is, so that spaceship will now, we can see this, this one has has a completely full tank of uh, mineral water in it, well a very very nearly very nearly full tank, and a load of um, rare metals as well, and, and some vulcanite cubes as well. So those are all being brought over in order to be turned into the, into the iridium. When it arrives, it'll unload all of that, and then we'll suddenly have a load of mineral water available down on Kothar, which will allow the system to then pump it through down here by train, and all of this will kick, kick back in again. Now, I suspect what we might need to do is set that ship to depart as soon as it runs out, either as soon as it runs out of mineral water, or when it's completely full of iridium and other such, such nonsenses. If we do that, then I think we can build up a little bit of a buffer of the mineral water, and so get to the point where there is enough mineral water available in the system for all of this to carry on working, even when the spaceship isn't here actively unloading. Because at the moment, the spaceship arrives, it unloads its mineral water, we use all that mineral water up to make enough iridium for the spaceship to fly away again, and then the system goes to sleep because there's no mineral water left until the ship arrives again and there's the mineral water to make another shipload. So we actually, we need another shipload of mineral water to be brought over and unloaded here to get the system running so that it can carry on producing while the ship isn't there. Uh, and that is currently being a bit of a problem because we are so close to the edge in what, it, in what we're able to provide. It's not too bad, but it's not quite there yet. A little bit. Uh, uh, we we need we need that we need that buffer to be supplied and provided. And unfortunately, I don't think the amount we get out of the core processing is quite enough for that. Although maybe maybe in the long run it would be if we left this for long enough. Perhaps we'd then eventually get enough mineral water out of the core processing that we would be able to. Um, that the, the, there would be that that buffer that we need. I'm not sure, but we'll uh, we'll we'll. I think we'll probably do it the, the other way. Mike did have an other idea for in order to fill the spaceship up, so uh, he decided it'd be interesting to bring over a massive quantity of raw immersite and unload that into the spaceship. And as you can see, that has now been stopped because we decided that was a bad idea. But the, the, it, the theory behind it made a certain amount of sense. The plan was that if you can put more stuff into the ship that isn't iridium, and therefore doesn't require mineral water in order to generate it, then the ship doesn't have to have as much iridium in it in order for it to leave. And so he ran that for a um, once, and then uh, someone who was keeping an eye on Norvis Orbit said something along the lines of, why is there an enormous amount of raw rimacite in the in the warehouse over here? What on earth is going on, Mike? What have you done? Um, <laughs> basically. Because what was going to end up happening was there wasn't anything at the other end to deal with it. So it was all going into the junk warehouse here, being taken down to Norvis, being picked up by bots and put into the warehouse of shame. Or at least that's what would have happened. Um, instead, we now have a station up here with a warehouse that has 23,000 uh, raw imacite in it that we're, uh, we're not quite sure what to do with. Maybe we'll drop a nuke on it or something. In theory, it, we could potentially have that being brought in, brought up to Kothar and then taken away to Taras uh, in, in, in this spaceship, just filling this one up a bit and taking it over for to be processed over there, but we hadn't put in the, in, in the infrastructure for that, so it it, it wasn't going to happen, um, and so it, it was a silly idea. We 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 do don't want to do that. We're not we're not going to do that. However, I believe Mike has now stopped sending all of the miscellaneous ore stuff that comes out of the core processing here down to his uh, mini mall down here to be turned into useful stuff because. Basically, at this point of the game, the sort of useful stuff you can make with a mini mall like this isn't going to be good enough for uh, for actually expanding. So, I mean, for, for example, he's made yes, okay, he's making the inserts. The inserters actually might be okay, but he's making assembly machines and chemical plants along here. I think somewhere, yeah, he's making tier tier two assembly machines here. He's making he's not he's not actually not actually not making chemical plants. But even if you but the point is, even if he was, he wouldn't be making the sort of chemical plants that we're actually using because we've advanced we've advanced onto higher levels of technology now, and so the sort of stuff that you can make out of relatively basic stuff in a relatively small condensed mall like that is not going to be able to make the machines that we need to put in on this planet. To be honest, it, actually it could be use, still useful for making red belts, maybe even blue belts, but it's but it's not going to be useful for making any of the machines. And so we're now taking all of the miscellaneous ore that comes out here uh, somewhere, probably on this belt, 
I imagine this is now running all the way up to the. Oh, good grief! Yes, this is running all the way up here, and to be put into into the uh, into the train to go up here. And so this means that they'll, as well as the um, iridium that he's making, he's also going to be chucking a load of the byproducts in the train, in and then into the spaceship. And so hopefully that will mean that it, it gives us that extra little bit of fill up there. Oh, look, the, sp the spaceship must have arrived because the uh, the train is leaving. Unless you've got a timed. No, that's got a timed thing on it as well. Okay, um, the spaceship has not arrived yet. But it means we can then, we've got a few other things that we can put into the spaceship in order to fill it up a bit more quickly and hopefully allow it to fly a little bit more often and bring over a bit more mineral water. And so that train has dropped off the mineral water down here. We're now able to make a little bit of the nitric acid. So that, and that, that is now the system will be kicking back in again. We can see that's actually filled up really, really quickly. That's quite impressive. And that means that up here, all of these systems have started running again. We've got all of the, uh, we, we can now, we can carry on powdering. Well, actually, we can carry on making the blast. No, we can carry on making the powder down here. That was where it, well, that was the stage that had stopped. And therefore we can start making the blast cake up here. Now I noticed these belts haven't quite filled up yet. Um, I'm not sure whether that's where, where exactly where the shortage is, but eventually these will all fill up. And as you can see, we're now getting very pretty close. Yeah, we're now getting a nice solid red belt of blast cake coming out here. And so this is what we were. This is what we've been working towards. This is what we saw running at the end of the last stream, and we we're all very impressed because. This means that we are now producing the uh, the iridium at a at a much much higher rate, and and it turns out it was my fault all along. We were just not shipping over in anything like enough of the enriched vulcanite. So, yeah, it um, it is now it is now a solved well now a mostly solved problem apart from the mineral water issues I was talking about earlier. <laughs> And again, yes, another mostly solid belt coming from down here. And as, this, as as all the buffers start to fill up, this will start to run a bit more, a little bit more solidly. And everything, everything will be amazing again. Back over in Norvis orbit, Tristan was having a look at the um, the solar panel production over here, and this is this is in the um, in the in the sort of the, in the streams and miscellanea production area uh, where we're going down to down to the probe rocket. So we've got we've got all these machines along here that are make, trying to make solar panels, but Mark Point had pointed out that there seemed to be a bit of a shortage of them, and so he was trying to make them off the bus, which is less good because I think it's a less it was less efficient, and I can't remember why. Um, maybe it isn't actually less efficient anymore. But anyway, he was trying to make them off the bus, uh, and we didn't really want that. We thought we'd, we were trying to make them all down here in, 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 in bulk. And as you can see, there's loads of machines making them. And this works quite well. Uh, however, Tristan went and went in to investigate why it wasn't working as well as it should be, and he discovered that a lot of these resources along here weren't being brought up in sufficient quantities. Fortunately, that was quite an easy, easy fix. All he needed to do to get that running running better was to increase the uh, the demands on the uh, wherever the shopping list is in this, this area. I have no... Is it you? No, is it you? It's probably you. Yes, he increased the shopping list over here. So we're now asking for two thousand aeroframe scaffolds and um, more, and a thousand of the advanced solar panels. So we've now got more of those being stockpiled up here. Uh, so in theory, the train will the train will keep the the supply slightly higher, and therefore we're less likely to run out of those. And, and as you can see at the moment, things seem to be absolutely fine. And I, I, I came in and I stole away nine hundred solar panels to upgrade my uh, power generation capacity over in um, Agnea, and it didn't have any problems there at all. So. It seems to be it seems that it's probably okay, um, and it's caught up again already. So this system seems to be working. Well done there. And he's also re replaced these machines up here. Certainly the iridium one, and possibly the other two, to to uh, to go from being a single no sorry from being two um, assembly machines to a a manufactory, which is, which is significantly faster. And so that's allowing us to have enough iridium available, iridium plates available that are then passed over here. And are they actually required for the solar? Sol sol well, no, they're not. But apparently, whatever. Apparently there was an insufficiency of them for making these these cargo these uh, these uh, probe rockets. I, I I don't know. Oh wait, I think no. Actually, I think it's this one up here that was up upgraded. So slightly higher up, not not the one down here. The one up here was upgraded to, to chop up the iridium a bit more quickly and to pass that then pass that through along here for making the mirrors that are, that go into making the solar panels. That makes a lot more sense. And so yeah, that that and that has meant that uh, we're now able to yeah maybe now able to make the um, the mirrors quickly enough to make to make the solar panels at the rate we want and also to keep this train satisfied. That in, in intrigues me. It makes me wonder if we're getting um, ingots brought up in multiple places along here. And yes, we clearly are. We're having, we're having iridium ingots brought up to here. To here? Yes, to here. As well as to down here. And that seems slightly silly, but uh, to be honest, I don't think it, I don't think it's a, a serious problem. I don't think it's worth messing with. Uh, I'm happy to just leave that as it is. <laughs> But making all these extra mirrors meant that we're producing large quantities of scrap. And now right now the system's gone to sleep, so it didn't matter. But there's all of this extra scrap coming through here. And so Tristan's also done some done a little bit of prioritization and tweaking of things up here. Um, and I've joined in with that as well. So what's he done? Okay, he's he's um split it across so the scrap is being put onto two different belts over here, uh, to sort of to separate it out a bit and, and give it have a little bit more output available. 
I've also gone through here and, and changed the priorities on all of these inserters. So like this one here, I'm prioritizing the scrap that's being brought in from the whatever's going on here. This is this is a, the astro science, for example, and done that everywhere because we have the material science over here that is sort of, as you can see at the moment, it's all asleep. And I think it's probably it. Um, I think it's asleep because it's run out of iridium, but it, or iridium intermediates. But in the, but every so often this kicks in into really really high gear and outputs basically three solid belts of junk come or scrap and contaminated scrap down here. And when that happens, all the rest of the factory starts to struggle because there's these three belts coming along here, and then all of the rest of the factory is trying to load onto those belts as well in order for the scrap to come into here to be reprocessed. And that's not ideal. Um, it basically means that whenever this kicks in, everything else fails because it doesn't have the, it doesn't have enough throughput and so I've simply I've gone gone through and I've just set the priorities on all of these in splitters to make sure that we're prioritizing the scrap that's coming in from the rest of the factory make sure that, that gets used up first and, and fed into fed into the system as the higher priority as I say and as we've seen before this then all feeds into the into the scrap recycling over here yeah there's not as I say not very much of it coming through at the moment but the amount of scrap we produce does swing back and forth quite rapidly um, and then it gets passed through down here goes down goes down in the trains to be to be dealt with on Norvis and I showed you all the upgrades that have been done to the uh, to the to the, de to the dealing with the junk down on Norvis earlier already um, because I got overexcited when I was talking about the Vulcanite and was <laughs> yes I was supposed to talk about this um, at this point but I got overexcited when I was talking about getting rid of all the junk from from the Vulcanite process processing and talked about it then instead. I hope you can forgive me. But out of curiosity, let's have a look at the scrap production graph. Yeah, so looking at it over 50 hours, we can see some definite spikes in it, and I think these really tall spikes are when the material science has kicked in. But looking at it over a shorter range, it's, yeah, I guess this sort of level down here is when we're producing it from other things, maybe the all of the other science packs and the mirror, mirror production and that sort of thing. And then these, this big jump up by a sort of a 4.6 thousand per minute or whatever. This is all it being produced by the material science area as it kicks in and kicks out again. Uh, so it, it, it's a little bit bursty as you can see, material, 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 material. Uh, but then, but the, which is why I think it, it's going to be fair to put a little bit of a, um, a, a damper on it. I was considering putting in a warehouse in here just to take it, take in all of the scrap that's being generated, and then sort it, and then have it come out, and then have have a, have a bit of a buffer for it. I haven't done that, but it might be something that we end up wanting to do in the end. Uh, we we shall uh, later on. We sh we shall see. But at the moment, it it seems to be hanging on and basically working, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. And that brings us resoundingly to the middle of what of the update for this week. So uh, thank you for watching. I shall can be back on Monday with the other half of it and uh, talk about what Mark has been doing and other stuff that's been other stuff that's been going on around the around the rest of the uh, the system. Um, in the meantime, uh, th thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next one. Uh, there'll be what's what else is going on on the channel. I'm oh yes, I'm planning to do another stream this evening. If you're around, keep an eye out for that. That'll be at 7:30 p.m. UK time. I'm going to be taking another look at Foundry because I got sort of half. I reckon I got halfway through the demo and would like to carry on with that this evening. I'll be back on Tuesday for another stream. Uh, the plan at the moment is to be streaming Satisfactory on uh, on Tuesday because uh, Mark was generous enough to give me a copy of it because after I played Foundry, he thought it'd be a good idea to take a look at the other 3D factory game that isn't Dyson Sphere program so you know try, try then I'll have tried the big three of them um, and it'll be, it'll be interesting to and, and the idea is to do that one quite close to doing Foundry so I can compare the two a bit more effectively rather than coming along going well I I know I played Foundry a month ago but I can't remember what it was like so XCOM is going to carry on being on hold for at least at least one week more we'll see how that goes but I am keen to get back to that as, as soon as I can and then on Thursday we'll be back again for some more Factorio and getting all of this built up. If you're not a channel supporter, keep an eye out on Wednesday when there'll be a tutorial video coming out, uh, which is the one that the supporters saw last week. Uh, I'm going to be talking a bit about the module inserter mod, which is an incredibly useful mod. We use it a lot in, in space exploration, but I can see it being useful at other times as well. So, yes, I think that's everything to, uh, everything to advertise. <laughs> as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.